Hello, good day, everyone. Welcome back to our subject, Purposive Communication Using English in Multilingual Contexts. I hope that you are in a comfortable seat wherever you are watching this pre-recorded video. And now let's start with our lesson for Unit 1, Language and Communication. Lesson 3, Communication Processes, Principles, and Ethics. So we are done with our Unit 1, Lesson 2 discussion, which is all about the types of communication in where you identify the types of communication in relation to communication mode, context, and purpose and style. And you also differentiated uh, the verbal and nonverbal and visual communication and their subforms in relation to communication modes. And now and today, Let's proceed with the last lesson in unit one, which is all about the lesson three, communication processes, principles, and ethics. So here's the learning outcomes of our lesson three. First is to explain the various communication models and how they help in understanding the process or understanding the communication process. Second is to identify the variables involved in the communication process, discuss the value of communication in enhancing one's personal and professional relationship, determine the principles for effective oral and written communication, evaluate the differences between oral and written communication, and lastly, to point out the ethical issues involved in communication and recognize the importance of a code of ethics in communication. And that's our learning outcomes in unit one, lesson three, communication processes, principles, and ethics. Okay, let's start. What is communication models? In lesson two, in unit one, lesson two, you learned about the types of communication mo mode context and purpose and style. So in this lesson, you will review the nature of communication process and some important communication models. And you will be exposed some uh, communication models later on. Okay? And let's start with the communication models. So what is communication model? Why is it important that you know the communication model? The answer of these questions is that you will realize their importance of communication because they will help you understand how a communication process works. And so, what is communication model? And let's find out. So communication model, there are many conceptual models for human communication, but in this lesson, you will be exposed only four communication models. And these are the following. The Aristotle's communication model, the Las Wells communication model, the Shannon Waver's communication model, and lastly is the David Burlos communication model. Although, these models of communication differ and they contain some common elements. And let's find out these common elements of each communication model. And let's start with the first communication model, which is all about the Aristotle's communication model. So what is Aristotle's communication model? A classic rhetoric dates back to ancient Greece during the time of Plato, Aristotle, and the Greek sophists who were great rhetoricians. And if we say sophist, Manisha uh, sophist uh, or, or a Greek sophist was a teacher in an ancient Greece in the fifth or fourth centuries. Okay. And effective public speaking was an important consideration in the study of communication. Again, ha, ang effective daw public speaking is a very important or a paramount consideration in terms of communication. And they were good at argument, 
uh, I mean, they are good at argumentation and debate and speech was characterized by repartee. Repartee here, it refers to, um, to the conversation or speech characterized by quick response. Manang repartee, quick response or conversation or speech um, characterized by a quick response. And lastly, Aristotle emphasized that there are three variables in the communication process. And let's find out these three variables involved in his communication model. So this is the communication flow of Aristotle's communication model. The first variable is the speaker. Second variable is the speech. And the third variable of Aristotle's communication, guess what? The, of course, the audience. <laughs> so these are the variables of Aristotle's communication model, the speaker, the speech, and the audience. So what's the purpose of speaker? The speaker is the person who speaks. Mona siya ang nag -storya. What is speech? A speech that the speaker produces. Kung unsa ang historia ni speaker, and that is the speech. And the audience is the person who listens the speech from the speaker. Oh, I hope ha, nga wala naglibog sa, sa communication model ni Aristotle. Again, si speaker nagproduce of speech and si audience nagreceive sa speaker nagikan. Ah, again, again, again. Para di na maglipo. Si speaker nagproduce of speech nga nareceive ni audience gikan kang speaker. Okay? And take note that the speaker variable here is very important. Very important ni siya ha. Pinakaon ng variable. Speaker. Di ba matang nang i-discuss in a, uh, sa mga previous na itong discussion nga in communication, dapat at least one nga na ay sender or speaker. Okay, wala may tamo nga communication kung wala ang speaker or sender. Okay? And that is why the speaker variable here is very important. I hope that's clear. In short, the communication model of Aristotle is linear. Kanong linear man siya? Straight lang ang iyahang process. Straight lang, di ba? Speaker. Ojet, uh, speaker, speech, audience. Walay feedback na hitabo. Okay? Again, walay feedback na hitabo. That is why gitawag lang siya o linear ang iyahang communication model. And that's the communication model of Aristotle. I hope that's clear. Okay, next, let's find, uh, let's find out the second communication model. So what's the second communication model? The last world's communication model. So what is, communi uh, what is last world's communication model? In 1948, Harold Dwight Laswell, the complete name of Laswell, described communication as being focused on the following five Ws. Who says, by Selena Gomez, charot. <laughs> who says, what in, which channel, to whom, and with what effect? Okay, let's see the communication flow of Las Wallace's communication model and the five Ws. The first variable is the communicator. Diba kang Aristotle yung gigamit nga sender is a uh, speaker to kang Aristotle. Ang Kalaswell is communicator and be aware of this ha. Ila ila sila term sa kana nga sender or speaker or communicator or sa mga source uh, mana siya ila sila. Again the first variable kang last kang Laswell is the communicator. The second is the message. Third is the medium. Fourth is the receiver, and the last is the effect. And these are the five variables of Laswell's communication model. So let's discuss each variable. Who? Ang communicator. Sending out a message. Kinsay nag sending out a message. Ang communicator. Says what? Using a medium. Unsa yang medium nagigamit? 
mo ni siya ang message nga iya hang giproduce with the use of medium. And that is why in which channel or medium ang iya hang gigamit. For a receiver, it's a phone, a television, a radio, oral, or written. To whom? Para kay kinsa na siya. Kang receiver na siya. To experience and effect. With what effect? O sa nga effect? After niya ma-receive ang message from communicator. Okay? And that's the last was communication model. Last was communication model. Parihara gyapon na siya ka Aristotle. Linear lang gyapon. Diba? As we can see, straight lang gyapon. Walay feedback na hita mo or even noise nga na hita mo. And that is the last was communication model. Like for example, CNN News, a water leak from Japan's tsunami crippled nuclear power station resulted in about 100 times the permitted level of radioactive material flowing into the sea. Operator Tokyo Electric Power Co. Co-operator co co said on Saturday. So I have a question here. Unsa ang ato ang whom? Is it, the, is it the Japan's tsunami crippled nuclear power station? Masa atong who? Who na to is ang Tokyo Electric Power Co. Operator. And that is our who. O sa atong what? Ang what na to is the radioactive material, material flowing into the sea. O sa channel gigamit. Of course, it's CNN News. So CNN News, television ang gigamit. Womb, para ka kinsa? Para ka kinsa? Of course, para sa taga Japan or in public. And what effect? Nga ma-alert ang mga tao from Japan sa radiation. And mauna siya ang last was communication model. And that is... Uh, and that's how we are going to identify sa mga variables sa communication model ni Laswell in terms kung hatagan ta og situation or scenario. Like for example, kaning ina ni CNN News that was ipa-identify na ko unsa ang who, unsa ang what, channel, whom, and effect. Okay? I hope that's clear. If it's not clear, ibalik to ang akong gipang storya about this Laswell's communication model. And... Also, last was communication model. Matong gingon si inyo hagaina that is similar to Aristotle's. In the same sense that both are linear and have same components. Last was also differs in that there are five variables involved with addition of medium and effect. Molang na ang nadugang kang last well. Ngawala kang Aristotle. Okay? And the advantages of last world's communication model is that it is easy and simple. And of course, it suits for almost types of communication. On the other hand, the disadvantages are feedback and noise are not mentioned sa communication model ni last world. Okay? Next, let's find out the third communication model. And let's see if naana ba ang feedback and noise. Let's find out. So our third communication model is the Shannon and Waivers communication model. So this model is specially designed to develop the effective communication between sender and receiver. Also, they find factors with affecting the communication process called Noise. Naana si noise din hiya sa communication model ni Shannon and Waver. So let's discuss. Cloud or Cloudy Elwood Shannon, the complete name of Shannon, and Warren Wavers, or uh, my, I mean Warren Waver is the complete name of Warren. So Shannon and Waver's communication model was introduced in 1949 after a year last was for Bell Laboratories. So in this communication model, other components such as noise, reception, 
destination and feedback had been identified. And lastly, other terms such as information source for the sender, transmitter for the encoder, decoder for reception, and receiver for the destination were introduced. And the advantage, uh, no, no, let's proceed now. Let's proceed sa, sa mga uh, variables sa communication model nila Shannon and Waver. We have the first variable is the sender. The second variable is the encoder. Third is the channel. Decoder is the fourth variable. Fifth is the receiver. Sixth is the feedback. And the last is the noise. So let's discuss each variable of the communication model of Shannon and Waver. So let's start with a variable sender. So the sender here is um, the originator of the information source that selects a desired message. And that is the sender. Encoder. What's the encoder? Dili lang mag-encode sa kuan ha, typewriter. <laughs> encoder is the transmitter which converts the message into signal. And the noise. The noise here is the message are transferred from encoder to decoder through channel. During this process, the messages may be distracted or affected by physical noise, like, for example, the horn sounds, the thunder, the crowd noise, or mga encoded signal may distract in the channel during the transmission process, which affect the communication flow of the receiver may not receive the correct message. And the decoder here is the reception place of the signal, which converts signals into message, a reverse process of encode, see decoder. Again, see decoder is a reverse process of encoder. And the receiver, is the destination of the message from the sender. And lastly, the feedback is the reaction of the message. And that's the variables of Shannon and Weaver's communication model. <laughs> so like for example, nanawag kasi mo uyan. Ikaw ang sender or ikaw ang speaker. Sender man ang term kang Shannon and Waver. So ikaw ang sender. Nanawag ka ha, nanawag ka si Muiyab. Ikaw ang sender. Nag-encode na kasi mo ang istorya. Ang imong gi-encode, magkita ta unya sa SM kay mag-date tang duha. On say channel nga gigamit, of course, electronic media or your telef or telephone, your cell phone. Then, ni sulot si noise. Samtang nagstorya ka nga. Magkita ta sa SM kay magdata. Gi-internalize na sa imuhang girlfriend or boyfriend ang imuhang istorya. Ni feedback imuhang girlfriend or boyfriend. Ha, unsa to? Magkita ta sa SM kay nga no to? Wala niya na klaro ang imuhang gi-encode. Kay ni insert man si noise samtang nagstorya ka nga magkita ta sa SM kay magdate. Okay? So ni balik na i feedback na hitabo. Ni feedback ang imo hang girlfriend or boyfriend. Balik na pud sa imo. Gi-encode na pud nimo otro nga magkita ta onya sa SM kay magdate. Tapos channel mo to, cellphone mo gigamit ni insert na pud si noise. Wala gi-internalize na pud ni boyfriend or girlfriend, wala gyapon niya na sabtan. Ni feedback na po siya sa imuha. Tarong nga kay wala ko kasayod sa imong istorya. Pangitag lugar nga walay noise. 
sa mga auto. Niingon na dahil si sender or ikaw, niingon kasi mo hang, uh, ang imuhang, the same message lang yapon, the same lang yapon yung gi-encode. Magkita ta sa SM kay mag-date. So yung channel gigamit, cellphone. Ato sang i-ex si Noisa, tapos na-internalize niya, nasabta niya, nasabta si imuhang girlfriend or boyfriend, then i-feedback tayo sa si imuha. Okay, mga unsa nga oras. On historia na po na yung kasiya ha. Mga alas 4. O yan, insert na po si Noyce. Ha? Yana na po din mong girlfriend or boyfriend. Ha? Ang sanga oras? O, nabalik na po si Emo, ha? Mga nang mangita na po kag-place nga walay noise or mga distraction. Ningun na po kalas 4 sa hapon with the use of your channel nga cellphone. O na-internalize niya, nadungog niya sa Emo, ha? Nadungog si mong boyfriend or girlfriend nga alas 4 dyan mo magkita. So, may ingun na yung mong girlfriend or boyfriend sa Emo, ha? Mo feedback siya sa Emo, ha? Okay, see you later. Kaligo, kay ba si Boho Pag-ilo? <laughs> so, mao na siya ang process sa communication model ni Shannon and Waver. I hope nga clear sa inyo ha ang communication model ni Shannon and Waver. And next, let's find out the last or fourth communication model. The Burles communication model. So, um... Burlow's communication model. David Burlow is the complete name of Burlow. So, Burlow's communication model, conceptualized in 1960, is probably the most well-known among the communication model. Si Kat ni siya ang Burlow's communication model. Gano? Initially, Burlow's communication model was called SMCR, which stands for sender, M for message. C for channel, and R for receiver. So there are how many variables? Four variables. So natay encode and decode. Sa encode, na asi source o na asi message. Sa decode, na asi channel and C, receiver. So let's discuss each variable as MCR or source, message, channel, and receiver. Kang source na siya yung mga aspect ng communication, communication skills, attitude, knowledge, social system, and culture. Si message na siya yung mga aspects ng mga and aspects or features, mga content, elements, treatment, structure, and code. Si channel, na po siya yung features nga hearing, seeing, touching, smelling, or tasting, mga senses. Kang receiver, the same feature kang source. Okay, let's discuss each feature sa each variable. So let's start with the source. So si source, na ni sila ng mga features. Si source is the first, the first variable. The source is the being originator of the message and act as the encoder. Si communication skill. Ang saan si communication skill? The encoder should practice the following communication skills. The listening, speaking, writing, and reading. So communication skills mo na siya ha? Nag-include na siya sa reading, listening, speaking, and writing. The attitude. The attitude towards the audience. So once attitude in relationship to the audience, receiver and subject changes and meaning and consequence of the message. And that is the attitudes. Knowledge is, of course, the knowledge of your knowledge about the topic. The familiarity with the subject of the message makes, uh, makes communication more effective. And lastly, ito lang gisabay si social system and culture. Uh, the social system that he or she is in which includes values, beliefs, and practices, and culture. So social system and cult, uh, si social system, um, values, beliefs, religion, rules, influence the way in which the sender mm -hmm. communicates the message alongside location and circumstances. While culture, of course, cultural differences may result in the message being interpreted um, differently. Okay?
And now let's proceed with our second variable in Berlus communication method. So we are done with the source. So now let's proceed with the message. So a message is the package of information or meaning that is sent from the receiver, okay? The message can be sent in various forms such as audio, speech, text, video, or other media or other electronic media. So the sender of the message always wants to receive, to interpret the message in a certain way. The source and the source's intentions, the source's intentions is therefore translated into a coded, coded message. So the receiver, the receiver should understand the meaning with a reasonable accuracy. Okay. And the message is influenced by these following features. We have the content, elements, treatment, structure, and code. So message is the second variable of, com of Berlus communication model, and it includes these features. Can is lang features? So let's discuss each feature. Content is the content itself. <laughs> the content of the message from beginning to an end. Mana siya ang content. The elements, such as the language used and gestures employed. Elements are verbal or nonverbal aspects, such as gestures and signs that may um, influence the message. The treatment or the manner by which the message is transmitted. So treatment, um, it refers to the way in which the message is sent and the messages packaging, mana siya ang treatment. Next is the structure, which refers to the arrangement of the parts or flow of the message. As the word suggests, structure na uh, arrangement or arrangement of the messages that refers to the way in which it is structured, and that is structure. And lastly, the code that shows how the message is sent, that is the language, which is the verbal code used and the accompanying gestures is the nonverbal code employed. So the code in the second variable message is the form in which the message is sent. This may include text, uh, what else, language, video gestures, music, and et cetera. And that's the second variable of Berlus communication model. So we are done with the source, the message, and now let's proceed with the channel. So the channel here, ang ito ang mga senses. Channel is the medium used to send the message. The medium must be able to pick up the sensory system of the receiver and may therefore involve the vision, the sound, the smell, taste, and or touch. So humans have the following sen senses. So the third channel, uh, the third channel, <laughs> the third variable is the channel. So it refers to the different senses. So let's discuss each senses. Hearing is the process function or power of perceiving sound. Gamit ang imuhang ilong? Oh, binog ilong. Gamit imuhang daunggan. Ear. Seeing. The, uh, the quality of the images of celestial bodies observed telescopically. O oh, sa'y gamiton? Huwag mo matagbataan. Of course. Ilong. Oh, charot. Ilong. Mata. Touching. Capable of arousing emotion and tenderness or compassion. Pagunit, smelling, pagsimhot, to perceive other scent or through stimuli affecting the olfactory nerves. And tasting, pagtilaw, or gathering at which people sample, compare, and evaluate different wines or drinks. Mabi na yung hili pag namo sa mga mall or sa Robinsons mga free taste, charot. Mujudgment, lagi dayon kasurba. 
So, mana siya ang third nga variable sa wireless communication model, which is channel with the following features nga to ang different senses. So, we are done with the source, the message, the channel, and now let's proceed with the receiver. The receiver is the person who receives and subsequently decodes the coded message. In a linear communication process, the receiver is always located at the end. At the end is siya. Mr. Pod, oh, na asa pinakauna. Just think about it kung nasa pinakauna sa receiver, yun, nasa la si sender or si source, di ba? It's impossible. Okay? So, di na natin i-discuss ng mga features ni receiver kay the same features lang man sila ni source. Okay? And... Mani siya, nagbalik-balik siya, source. And now let's proceed with the general principles of effective communication. Since communication is a two-way process, it is important that you know the principles to be observed to make it effective. For both oral and written communication, you should be able to apply the following general principles of effective communication. So we are talking about general. So solo din hi asi written and si oral communication. Okay. So here, the first general principle of effective communication. Know your purpose in communicating. Are you communicating basically to inform, to entertain, or to persuade? Well, you have more than one purpose. There is still a more dominant objective or reason why you communicate. So in our first general principle, know your purpose in communicating. We have a lot of purposes in communicating. Uh, we have a lot of purposes in, communi communi in communicating people. But one thing that we should secure is the main or the dominant purpose. Why are we communicating? Is it to inform or to give information? To entertain or to amuse people? To persuade or to believe something? So you should know your purpose in communicating. Even though, kung daghan tayong mga purpose sa ito ang pag-storya or sa pag-sulat, dapat na dito ay mas muhangat, mas dominant siya nga, mojo na ito ang uh, aim nga purpose sa ito ang pag-communicate, either oral or written communication. The second principle is to know your audience. In both speaking and writing, you should know your audience as well it, it, uh, as as it will dictate the speaking or writing style you are going to employ. You should know the common traits and interests of your audience. Kung interesado ba sila sa ilang mga age, kabalo ka sila hang age, sila hang sex, sila hang race, family status, economic status, educational status, their community, occupation, religion, politics, and membership. So in this second general principle, to start, if you are being strategic, you should know something about your audience because you should have picked who you are communicating with based on your goals. And always put in your mind that before you say it or write it, think about your listener and your reader. How do they want to hear it and read it? And that's the important, uh, or that's the, uh, yes, the important on how to know your audience. Okay? Dapat kabalo ka sila ang mga traits and interests. Okay, like for example, ang imong mga audience, ilahang interest is about politics. Plus, nag-isa story ka na about anime. Sao na lang. Asa na lang ang interest ni mong audience? Wala mo'y communication, wala mo'y, ang uh, mahitaba na, no? Is communication breakdown or, na may mga miscommunication, hindi dyan mo magkasinabotanan. Kaya nga, no? Lahi man ang traits nga 
or lahi ang interest mo audience is lahi ang imuhang topic. So you should know jud sa ilang traits and interests. Okay? Third communication uh, third general principles of effective communication is to know your topic. You communicate essentially because you want to share something. In speaking situations, speakers are invited because they have something to share. And this also applies to writing. You write because you wish that people learn something from you. And you may then utilize several or multiple communication techniques to easily catch the attention of the audience. You, know, you should know your topic. You should be um, knowledgeable enough or you should be an expertise of that particular topic. And you should know your objectives in your topic and you should study about your topic. So you should give justice sa imuhang topic. Okay? Give justice to your course. Next principle adjust your speech or writing to the context of the situation. Ano na pong context, setting or environment. O na ba? The environment in which your speech or writing is to be delivered determines the kind of language you will use. Mag-adjust mag yun ka. Kung ikaw, English speaker ka, yung imong mga audience, Tagalog or Bisaya, or mga, oh, yung wala na ito nga, imong mga audience, mga Bisaya, nga, dito kabalo, to understand English. So this should pog mag English English ka. This should pog no. So you should adjust your speech or your language or your writing style in a situation. Dapat kabalo po ka makisama or makisabay sa imuhang mga audience or sa imuhang mga reader. Again, adjust your speech or writing to the context of the situation. Fifth is to work on the feedback given you. Once you receive comments from the listener or readers, work on them. Take kindly to criticism. In the long run, constructive criticisms will prove beneficial to you as you learn to address them. Because I do believe, I really do believe of this saying that uh, lessons in life will be repeated until they are learned. So once you receive comments, fill yours from your audience or for your uh, mga readers, work on them. Be proud nga gikoreksyonan ka because without, makalearn ka. And you will never forget that person who corrected you. Mahala siya. Okay, once kung dilit ni mo na siya, malearn ang mga mistakes, dilit po di hapong ka mag-success in a future. Okay? Accept the mistakes. Embrace all your mistakes and flaws. When nagingon nga, work on them. Okay? Ayaw i-set aside. Ayaw i-set aside lang na ako na mga criticism sa akong mga readers, sa akong mga, sa akong mga listener. Dili. Work on them. Okay? Work on them. I-address ang ilang mga questions and clarifications. Okay. And that's the general, the five general principles of effective communication. And now let's proceed with the principles of effective oral communication. Kung kagaina is general, pwede ito siya sa oral and written. Karon, focus dito sa oral communication. So let's start with the first principle. Be clear with your purpose. You should know by heart your objective in communicating. You will never be called an effective speaker if you don't know the objective of your speech or even the purpose of your speech is ambiguous. Then, dili you ka matawag na effective speaker. Therefore, you must be clear with your purpose in communicating. Okay? Next is be complete with the message you deliver. Make sure that your claims are supported by facts and essential information. It simply means that if you are delivering a, a speech and you say a phrase that is familiar to some, some of your audience, and then you don't even acknowledge the owner of that phrase, and your audience make you a comic or a claimer. Diba? 
Dapat jud, if mag-deliver tag speech, labaw nagdili ato ang claims, dapat atong i-acknowledge ang author or ang owner to make your speech admirable. Pero yun na sa pag-ilog Is it admirable ba pag-ilog Never. Never ever. So dapat, kung magkuha ka phrase or mga sentences, I kwanjo na to, i-acknowledge na to ang author or ang mga owner and to make your speech admirable. Okay? In short, you must support with the facts and essential information ang imuhang kipangyawyaw. Like for example, makuha ka phrase, then mag-give po day kasi imuhang explanation about that phrase or yes, that's good. Uh, That's correct. That's good. That's correct. Magkakal phrases. Maghati lang sa i-elaborate nito ni mong speech based on your experience or whatever it is. Okay, ha? Mana siya. Be complete with the message you deliver. Third, be concise. You do not need to be verbose or wordy with your statement. Brevity in speech is a must. Labaw na kung yatagan ka o limit na time. Or yatagan ka time limit. No more flowering words and must be direct to the point ang imuhang speech. Magamit lang nimo ng mga flowering words kung taas pa ka available sa time. O, or magamit na po ng mga flowering words in an informal speech. Okay? Brevity. Masa ang brevity? You must be concise and exact of your speech. Fourth, be natural with your delivery. Punctuate important words with the appropriate gestures and movements. Exude a certain degree of confidence, even if you do not feel confident enough. Ano siya? Diri dayo na ito ma-insert si intrapersonal. Katong talking to oneself. Self-talk. Katong ako ang self-talk na ko. Nga di ko mo tanawag mirror kaya samot ko kakulbaan sa akong naong pangit. So matindog lang ko. I will just imagine nga kung nana ko sa uh, sa actual na stage ako lang imagine mga audience nga ako na sila mga kaaway nga mga bida-bida uh, mga kaaway na ako di ba kung na mga kaaway bida-bida ta <laughs> pakitang gilas mo na siya be natural with your delivery okay be confident next be specific and timely with your feedback inputs are most helpful when provided on time So if there are some feedbacks from your audiences, you need to respond them in a polite way because feedback should be educative in nature and feedback should be given in a timely manner. Mana siya ang dapat specific ta and dapat diritso din natos lahat agad feedback. Diritso din natos lahat agad feedback. Diritso din natos lahat agad feedback. Okay? Mana siya. And that's the five principles uh, and that's the Five principles of effective oral communication. And now let's proceed with the uh, uh, principles of effective written communication or the seven C's. So be clear. Be clear about your message. Always be guided by your purpose in communicating. So it simply means that all your objectives and purpose, purposes in writing must be clear. Okay. Next. Be concise. Always stick to the point and do not do bit or run around the bash. Be brief by focusing on your main point. Labaw na if you are making a letter to your boss, you must be concise and should focus on your main point. Use an appropriate words. Okay? Next, be concrete. Support your claims with enough facts. Your readers will easily know if you are bluffing or deceiving them because there is nothing to substantiate your claims. Like for example, if you are making your essay or a news article, you should support your claims with enough facts from certain authors and don't you uh, and do not forget to acknowledge Jude the author. Kay dili madali dali mailan ang ato ang mga readers. Okay? Next is be correct. Is it important that you observe grammatical correctness in your writing? Always have time to revise and edit your work. Even simple spelling errors may easily distract your readers. It is always a big deal, especially Jude in the Philippines. Mo 
mo kwan lang tahan na lang ko yee additional ani big uh, kaning 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 a principles sa uh, effective uh, written communication di ba it is always matangin ko nga it is always a big deal especially in the Philippines kana atong mga skin tone our virginity clothes uh, clothes we wear others life and of course the grammar di ba in short in writing you must uh, observe the correctness of your grammar spelling and the usage of punctuation mo nang every time nga uh, even though i am um, uh, i took english major pero ma-attest din ako that i am not hasa pa kaayo in the field of this specific course na po ko yung mga errors mga ambiguous words mga fragment pero I'm so proud of that because once I really admire those people na mag-correction sa ko. Really. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Okay? So, mano siya, we should be careful with our, uh, the use of our grammar, spelling, and punctuation or kung sa pa siya mga aspect in language. Kaya if mabasa na si mong reader ang imong book tapos sa first sa first sentence pa lang wrong grammar na dili na day na nila basahon sa imong mga readers ang imong handbook na publish so you must be careful of constructing sentences and if you are not confident enough sa imong hang written works then find a friend nga expert sa grammar and and it helps you and don't be discouraged ha if ma correctionan ka and if you think nang correction siya tapos mali pa jud dukla na imong friend kay Gaduang dugang na siya sa imang problem. <laughs> Again ha, dapat correct na ng grammar, spelling, and the usage of punctuation. Okay, next. Be coherent. Your writing becomes coherent only when you convey a logical message. The ideas should be connected to each other and related to the topic. Make sure that you observe a sound structure that will present a smooth flow of your ideas. Use transitional or cohesive devices so that the ideas cohere with one another. So in short, dapat magkaugnay ang imuhang pagsulat or dapat understandable jod ang imuhang pagsulat. Dapat masabtan jod sa imuhang mga reader. Like for example, sa pinakauna, atagan, akarap itong uh, mag-foreshadowing ngayon ng imuhang mga readers ba? Sa, sa introduction pa lang ni Mo, nanada yung mga far, foreshadowing ang imuha mga audience kain Ani ang mahitabo sa ending, Nana. So, dapat magkaugnay ang imong pagsulat or dapat understandable dyan ang imuha mga gipagsulat. Okay? Second to the last, be complete. Include all necessary and relevant information so that the audience will not be left wanting of any information. Always place Jody yourself in the shoes of the audience who always interested to receive a new information in short uh, in short jud nya kompleto walang walang halong uh, walay kulang walay sobra exact jud siya complete complete package jud siya okay and the last principle of effective commu written communication is be courteous the tone of your writing should be friendly sir mutingog dai nga magsulat Ah, with the use of your mga punctuation, mga commas, mga period, mga semicolon, mga na siya ang pasabot, Anna. The tone of your writing should be friendly. Avoid any overtone, undertone, or insinuation to eliminate confusion and misinterpretation. Okay? In short, you should use nga mga words, kan gentle words, or kanang mga polite words. And be careful lang po sa paggamit sa mga punctuation words. Ha? Kapag taka ba yung uban to gamit sa mga imbis di pa magkama, magkama na. So, ana, tuldukan. Oh, pag tuldok, padamdam. Hmm, mauna na ron. Si may colon lagi. <laughs> so, be careful ta ha sa ito ang magpanggamit ng mga punctuation. Okay? Kung dili ka ba lang mo gamit, magpatuga-tuga gamit sa mga punctuation. <laughs> okay, and that's the seven C's of principles of effective written communication. And now, let's proceed with our last discussion, which is all about the ethics of communication. Ethics of communication emphasizes that morals influence the behavior of an individual, group, or organization, thereby affecting their communication. It is important to note that one's behavior should be regulated by honesty, decency, 
truthfulness, sincerity, and moral uprightness. In short, this is the ethics of communication. This ethics of communication is all about the value system. Like for example, you listen when other when others speak. So speak non-judgmentally. And listen non-judgmentally. Speak from your own experience and perspective, expressing your own thoughts, needs, and feelings. And that is the essence of ethics in communication. And ethics of communication be guided by the following to achieve an ethical communication. First, establish an effective value system that will pave the way for the development of your integrity as a person. Because one's behavior and decision-making style affect in turn the operation of an organization. Okay, Manashaha. Second, provide complete and accurate information. Be complete. Whether it is needed or not, the data you provided should always be contextualized and correct. Kung sa yun ay nakabutang din sa karatula mo, yun ay dapat ang imuhang state yun. No more mga flowering words or mga chuba chuchu din ha. Okay? Next is disclose a vital information adequately and appropriately. Never conceal or hide information that are necessary for purposes or transparency. Okay, sige. Kung naay mga issue, historia. Ano lang siya kasi. And observing a code of ethics is essential as it determines the kind of behavior that is proper and desirable over one that is displeasing and offensive. A code of ethics is important for any organization. Without it, of course, confusion, misunderstanding, and conflicts arise within the structure since there are no standard to be observed. So ethical, con uh, so therefore, ethical communication is an extremely broad term. This term can be used to refer to any type of communication in which one is honest and responsible. And communication ethics is based on the idea that ethics emerge from, emerge from and occurs within communication itself. So we should be observed our ethics of communication wherever organization nga na belong ta. Okay? Bisag asa ta pa dong, wherever you are, even if you are in your family, dapat nagam mo kay ethics in communication. Okay? And that's the end of our unit one, lesson three. In short, we are done with our lesson one. Thank you. And before you end this video, don't forget, uh, wala, wala uh, if you have mga clarification or confusion about this discussion, you can post your ano, uh, queries or questions on the comment section where I posted this pre-recorded video. Okay? Kung naglibog pa dyan, please re-watch again this pre-recorded video. And I hope masabtan, nasabtan ninyo. And I hope that na nag-give na ako, uh, nahatagan na ako justice ang kaming ato ang unit one. Okay? Thank you so much, everyone. Again, we are done with our unit one language and communication. Thank you so much. And see you next time sa ang unit two discussion. Take care, everyone.